subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from Midnight our channel. Black or Lilac Purple, the key specifications that matter, a 6.2 inch 1440p display. You do have a 12 megapixel dual camera here with variable aperture f1.5 to f2.4. That's a first in a smartphone. Snapdragon 845 or on the other side of the world, 9810 Exynos, 6 gigs of RAM and a 3500 milliamp hour battery. So what about design on the Galaxy S9 Plus? Well, it's basically a refinement over the Galaxy S8 Plus and you can see it's really shiny, flat camera. They move the fingerprint to where you want it on this device. It has that beautiful display on the front. It actually gets a little bit shorter. You can see you have Bixby button returns, which some people won't like. At the bottom, we now have a stereo speaker as well as our headphone jack USB-C. Intelligence scan up at the front, eight megapixel camera. At the bottom, you do have a capacitive button here and you can see that the bezels are a little bit more bezel-less than before. And this phone is a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. And it actually is a little bit heavier as well but this really makes it easier to reach one hand but it's still more of a two hand phone now that's a little bit more wide but you do have the one hand mode here and overall i feel like it definitely feels like a plus phone more so than the galaxy s8 plus which felt a little bit more narrow so for those guys those ladies whoever likes those really plus size phones you're really gonna dig the samsung galaxy s9 plus it really stands out as a plus phone now when it comes to the build quality of the galaxy s9 plus i found this phone to be extremely durable except for the fact that the front glass surprisingly i got a scratch already i'm not saying it's bad glass but you probably want to try to find a screen protector and put a case on this thing it's fragile it's premium but it still can scratch scuff up and when you pay this kind of money for a phone you really do want to protect it so while i do think it's very durable the build quality needs some protection on this device kicking things over to the standout feature of this phone that's the display infinity display was marketed last year for the galaxy s8 plus and it returns here on the s9 plus which samsung claims is actually a little bit more bright and when you turn on auto brightness it's one of the first oled displays that's easily legible in the daytime no matter how bright it is outside and some of the best modes i feel like come back to this phone that is the amoled cinema amoled photo and basic all of these allow you to tweak the display to your liking and to the accuracy that you want now out of the box this display is still a little bit more saturated than what you're going to find on the ios side of things for the iphone 10 specifically i'm speaking about but it's a little bit more accurate than what i've seen on the samsung galaxy s8 plus so if you had that phone and you thought it was a little bit too saturated this one is even better than ever and whether you're reading text you are scrolling through your gallery just looking at some photos everything does punch out to you but it doesn't look too oversaturated as some of the phones in the past have looked but if it's still a little bit too saturated for you you can just go into settings turn on amoled photo and it will definitely tone it down quite a bit the super slow-mo looks great on here as well even though it's 720p that 2k display really makes it stand out here so the super amoled panel here whether you're playing games watching movies and you even have this new landscape mode which you could kind of do a nova launcher before but at least it's here right out of the box really makes this display not only feature packed but crispy punchy it's just everything you could kind of imagine and want in the display so hands down to me this is the best display on a smartphone thus far in 2018. android oreo comes to the galaxy s9 plus with samsung experience version 9.0 and just like all other Samsung phones, it looks very similar to all of them that are out right now when it comes to software. A few icons are a different color, but most of it is just a little bit cleaned up and looks about the same. You still have all your advanced features from all the latest Samsungs. It's here on the S9 Plus, of course. What else is new? But overall, what I noticed the most is that the performance was really nice on the s9 plus like really nice like very refined like the perfect samsung you know experience that we would want to see and at least that's out of the box now ram management was also good and that's something i don't see too much on samsung phones is excellent ram management but the s9 plus is a shocker and it did that just fine so if you really want a screaming fast samsung phone you have to, to get the s9 plus even over the s9 which has four gigs of ram and i think it's basically the standard six gigs of ram that the samsung flagship just needs so overall software you'll be finding features but performance is fan fantastic now it has some special features here on the galaxy s9 plus as well let's begin with super slow-mo 
a feature that's really going to give you a very slow video as you've seen that bus just going crawling slow but it's only at 720p so that's a pretty new feature now ar emoji here lets you take a picture with the front camera and kind of analyzes your face and it basically makes this you know like emoji character that kind of looks like you and you get to play around with it don't get me wrong when you first get this phone and you play with this feature it's fun but to me i found it to be kind of weak when it comes to the features it doesn't have a lot of customization and it doesn't have a lot of clothes and things like that so you know depending on who you are and how you dress and stuff like that a lot of people are not going to find this very accurate at all and it's going to feel like a cheap you know garbage software but overall i think that you know it's fun it's cute when you first get the phone but what I really think you're going to enjoy is using this variable aperture camera, at least when it comes to low light photos. Now to access those low light photos, you do have to go into the pro mode and hit the aperture settings and hit f1.5 to f2.4 or else Samsung will do it automatically. You can see at night, it was much dimmer than this picture is showing. This is the f1.5 showing its stuff. It really just brightens up the scene. Also a special feature is intelligence scan. So we're gonna go here and you can see that you can combine your face and iris scanning for a faster face unlock. Unlike before where you just had to choose iris scanning or facial recognition. And also they finally put the fingerprint scanner in the right location and it is also more accurate and quicker. Also you can measure your blood pressure on this phone. So this thing, it just has a bunch of extra features and you do have Samsung Pay, one of the best, if not the best mobile payment system on any phone right now as it works in pretty much every location. But let's take a look at these new stereo speakers and see how loud they are. So you also got equalizer settings and you've seen that when you hit Dolby Atmos, it gets very loud. Look at all these features you can play with in your Samsung music app. So this thing is loaded when it comes to music features and the speakers are the best ever on any Samsung. Now warning, we are going to play a little bit more music. This one gets quite loud, so I would lower down my headphones if I was you, if you're wearing headphones. If not, lower the volume down if you're in a room where it's quiet and you're going to disturb people, it's going to get loud here. Now when it comes to battery life, I haven't been seeing huge gains on this phone over the Galaxy S8 Plus. Now it is actually better than my Note 8. I'm getting about five to six hours of on-screen time. Everybody's battery life experience is gonna be a little bit different, but this phone is just to me average. It's not like amazing like the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, for example. This phone gets you through the day. Sometimes it won't if you're a super heavy user, but to me, it's pretty good battery life overall. Now let's talk about the camera in depth here. The camera here is a 12 megapixel dual shooter. And if we go into camera settings, this is a first for a plus S8 series or S series device. You got all these new features, which I find to be great, but at the same time, sometimes it's a little bit sensitive when you open up the camera, you accidentally swipe through and hit stuff. You do have live focus, which allows you to blur the background. You have pro modes here, panorama, food. There is a bunch going on when it comes to the Galaxy S9 Plus. However, I do like the fact that you can turn all of these features off in the settings if you do buy this device. So the best stuff though is really that f1.5 at nighttime. It really does show when you do get in low light. But in daytime, that f1.5 and f2.4, I don't see too much of a difference if you snap two photos in the daytime. But what I really like is that all the settings are right there in the camera. Apple take notes. This is really, I think, a feature most iOS users will like as well. All your camera settings are right there handy in the camera. And you do have floating camera button and a bunch of other settings that you're gonna be discovering months down the road that you never even knew your camera could do. Now the front facing camera, again, it's pretty good, but a little bit soft. We're gonna cover this more in my full camera review of this device. But you have wide selfie mode, you can do the AR emoji thing again, you do have selfie, and you do have like this selfie mode that allows you to blur the background. But I'm going to shut up talking here, go ahead and take a look at the samples for yourself of the S9 Plus.
So I can't do a review without talking about phone call quality. I really liked using this for phone calls because the signal was always there. That's not a problem, but the speaker phone was very loud and has an extra volume setting. It was great. Gaming performance was also great. Load times are quick and no matter what you're playing, it was fast. So the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus pretty much checks the boxes in every area if you do want a Samsung device. It has beautiful design, although refined over the S8 Plus. It's never a bad thing when you take a product that was loved, but makes it much better, especially fixes one thing a lot of S8 users complained about, and that was the lag. But we're gonna give you updates six months later to see if it does lag again. Fingerprints in the right location, finally. Speed, speed, speed. This is what we wanted, and this is what Samsung gave you. Although a lot of people like to see major drastic redesigns, the Infinity Display is only slightly touched up. So should you buy it? Should you buy the Galaxy S9 Plus? And the answer is tricky, it depends. If you have an S8 Plus, I would wait for the Android 8.0 Oreo if you didn't already get it. If that doesn't fix your problems and you just want another Samsung phone that just performs right, I think it's time to update. If you're a Note 8 user, hold off to the Note 9 and see if they put all these features